The episode you're about to listen to is part of season two series on the body, how our bodies shape our experience and how they both inspire and enable us to create art. Welcome to another episode of Art Heals All Wounds. I'm your host, Pam Uzel. On this show, we meet artists transforming lives with their work. When I was in third grade, my family moved. This, of course, meant changing schools. To say that I was not on board is an understatement. Once I began attending the new school, Almost like clockwork, every two weeks or so, I began having mysterious stomach flus. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't faking illness to stay home from school. The symptoms were very, very real. It took me until I was well into middle age to realize that emotions are experienced in the body. Of course, they're triggered by a combination of events and our thoughts, But it's almost as if the mind says, okay, body, you deal with this now. Working with a therapist helped me to understand that stress, fear, and feeling out of control affect my digestive system. When I discovered the podcast Breathing Wind from Sarah Davis, she describes her experience of grief as if she's standing into a fierce wind and trying to breathe. I immediately felt in my body what she meant. Her podcast is specifically about dealing with grief around the loss of a parent. For her, it was the loss of her father. As part of a way to work through her own grief, she invites guests to share their own story of losing a parent. Having lost my own mother five years ago, I understand what a generous gift an empathetic space to share this kind of loss is. You're listening to Art Heals All Wounds. Listen and let us inspire you. Sarah Davis, the producer and founder of the podcast Breathing Wind, began the podcast as part of her journey with grief after the death of her father in 2016. She also works as a learning experience designer where she focuses on empathy and learning design. Her work through this podcast is creating a widening circle of empathy for those who are also grieving the loss of their own parents. I'm so grateful that she's come on the show to talk about how creating community and normalizing conversations about grief have helped her forge a path through her own loss. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for being on this episode of Art Heals All Wounds. Would you start by just telling us your name and what you do? Yes. Hi, Pam. Thanks for inviting me. This is really fun. Mm. I am a learning experience designer and podcast producer based out of the Bay Area. That's how we met. We were trying to find podcaster friends nearby. So since we became friends, I've been listening to your podcast a lot, and I'm hoping you will tell us about it, the name of it and what it's about. Oh, great. I'm so glad to hear that. It's called Breathing Wind. And it really has started out of a personal desire. In 2016, my father passed away and I felt a lot of grief at that time. And I didn't, at that time, know of too many resources that were talking about parental loss and grief around losing a parent. So I set out to create the resource that I didn't have, essentially. Mm. And that's what Breathing Wind is. (laughs) Right. And I'm wondering, in your podcast, and just in talking with you, you've shared with me a little bit about your story, about your father. 
and the impact it had on you. Do you feel comfortable talking about that now? The story of losing your father and how it sort of propelled you into creating this podcast? Yeah, yeah. My dad was my rock. He was very supportive of everything I did. Mm -hmm. He was like an anchor to me. Even though we lived far apart, I moved away from home 20 plus years ago and it felt like we were distant, but he had built such a strong connection and force in my life. He Mm -hmm. always was my cheerleader. And one of the things he cheerleaded me on really was just pursuing art and pursuing my passions. I think in part because his dad, I mean, this has been lots of reflection, his dad did not support his journey to become a fine artist. He always wanted to be a painter. So whenever I had a creative project, he would go all in. (laughs) And I think I felt initially drawn I just remember the the night before, basically the night that I arrived back in Iowa, getting ready for his funeral, I just felt like, oh, I need to document. I need to remember everything about him and create a book. Hmm. And that book was going to be about model yachting, his hobby, and also a little bit more of a journey of his life. and. I kind of went down that path and then switched gears in my creative writing class to write more of a memoir of my own grief. Uh, And then that was too soon. So I had to kind of stop doing that. But it was still this idea that was percolating for a long time. I went to a retreat for young women social entrepreneurs which is a group based out of the Bay. Well, I think they're actually national, but it was in the Bay Area. And I just remember there was one workshop where we all got together and thought, what have we been thinking a lot about all year? And for me, that topic was grief. Mm -hmm. And what are we going to do about it? And I, I just remember thinking storytelling, voice. I didn't say podcast, but the all of the areas of podcast that have really filled me up with this podcast were on there. Storytelling, voice, community, connection, destigmatizing grief, all of those things. And so then fast forward, I just kept thinking about this and wondering about this. And it just kind of came to me to do the podcast. And I totally wasn't prepared. I don't have a background in journalism. I don't have a background as a grief counselor. It was very hard at first (laughs) to deal with both of those things. So it's given me so much as a result, so much opportunity to find my own voice and opportunity to connect with community in a very deep way. How often do you start conversations with, tell me about your parent who passed away? What are your favorite memories? Mm. It gets beneath the surface really fast. And I've built a lot of good friendships as a result. Yes, I can see that. There's a question I want to follow up on in terms of it being too soon. But I did just want to add that when you and I had lunch together, you allowed me to share my story of losing my mom also in 2016. And that is such a gift. I mean, often you feel like in a social setting, out having a lunch with someone, that your story of grief around the loss of your parent, or even just the story of like how it happened, isn't really going to be a welcome topic. So that was a great gift to me. I just wanted to let you know that. Thank you. I'm glad that it helped. It's it's strange how that happens, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you talked about it being too soon. And there's one thing that really struck me when I listened to the intro of your podcast. This idea of the title, Breathing Wind, that it's not a phrase I would have ever used, but I think we've all experienced that actual physical thing that 
it's all, it's like trying to drink out of a fire hose as well. Like there's too much of the thing that you're trying to take in. And it really made me think a lot about how we physically experience grief. And I'm wondering if you had similar thoughts or reflections when you were trying to process this and you were realizing, oh, this is too soon to really put this down on paper. Yeah. And well, and I'll give you just a, I'll give your listeners just a quick uh, background on breathing wind. The phrase breathing wind describes the feeling and the feeling of breathing in heavy wind, like you're saying. I think because I'm from Iowa, there are a lot of opportunities where you're breathing in this heavy, terrible windstorm or below zero temperatures. <laughs> And so it, the idea of to me came naturally, but it also relates to, for my experience with grief, anxiety. I mm. felt a lot of anxiety and it felt out of control and I didn't know how to manage it, actually, until I learned how to breathe. <laughs> so it has multiple layers of meaning. I love to think about my solution. My journey through this has been through meditation and mindfulness and and just sitting with people, guests, hosts, and feeling what they're feeling and helping that to shape the story too. Yeah, that's such an interesting thing. I don't know about you, but I think I was an adult before I realized that we experience emotions in our bodies. Yeah, I don't think I knew. I Well, I just didn't know what to expect. I think... I think that grief affects people differently mm -hmm. and maybe it could affect your body. For me, it did. It mm -hmm. definitely did. And I guess, you know, anxiety really constricts your breath. Mm -hmm. And it can also affect how you are in the world. So for me, what that first year that my dad died, it, transported me back to a 13 year old version of myself mm. who was introverted and who wanted to passively consume stories as opposed to engage in some of the conversations that might also be healing. But that was my reaction was, how do I myself navigate this without relying on other people even though there were other people in my universe, I just wasn't ready to engage in that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I'm so curious because I know that you've spoken and you're alluding to this sense of isolation, maybe self-isolation, but I'm just curious about this relationship between isolation, grief, and then you moving on to the podcast. Yeah. So a couple of things come to mind. One of my guests in season one, Ben, Benjamin Gunning, I'm happy to share with you the link in the show notes. Mm. He sat with me at a table at a party that I had felt like I had to go to a month and a half after my dad passed away. <laughs> wow. And I was not interested in talking about my dad. I wasn't interested in engaging on the topic at all. But Somehow he realized what had happened. I think I said something to him to the effect of like, just so you know, my dad passed away and I don't want to talk. Mm. <laughs> so if you're sitting here, just expect that. And he turned and told me, you know, my mom passed away. And he talked to me. He told me the story of that. And I started to feel comfort and validation and just this sense of like, oh, I'm not alone. I've mm -hmm. been feeling isolated and I've been purposefully, I mean, my 13-year-old self was protecting myself. Right. And here are people around me. I mean, at that dinner, there were at least three people who approached me saying, you know, my mom passed away too. And, you know, like just you may not understand it until you go through it. But just the common understanding and shared experience of that was maybe a seedling into what the podcast would become later. Right. And it was partly why I asked Ben to come on. So because I wanted him to share that story because it so resonated with me. He's a poet. 
he has a way with words and it was just really soothing for me to have that experience. Mm -hmm. And I think after about a year, I kind of resurfaced out of isolation. I wanted to have, I wanted to attend this group called the dinner party, but they were full. Can you talk about that group? They're a great group, actually. (laughs) For anybody listening who's in their 20s, 30s, I think they're reaching out to 40s too now. So I think the founders are getting older as well. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity to get together with other people who are peers, who've lost, who've had significant losses. Mm. In a dinner setting, the facilitators are trained and they talk about grief over a potluck dinner, basically. Wow. It's a wonderful, wonderful nonprofit. (laughs) Yeah, it sounds like it. You also, when you're saying this, I think in listening to this or maybe reading on your website, you feel like it's this thing of entering a club that you didn't, you know, ask to join this thing of grief over the loss of a parent. And depending on when it happens, you can feel like you're one of you know, you don't know anyone in your peer group that this has happened to yet. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt that way almost immediately. Right. And then slowly I realized I did know more people because I think people were not open about sharing it. Mm-hmm. And that's personal, you know, a personal reason to do that. But it just, mm-hmm. it's maybe not something you would bring up at a typical dinner party. Right, right. No, I get it. So I want to talk a little bit more about the podcast. You talked about interviewing your friend, Ben. Can you talk about what a typical podcast would be like? Oh, yeah. So season one was conversations with people about their losses. And I spoke with pretty much everybody was, well, I mean, it was everybody who had lost a parent when they were younger, which to me means the first of their peers. Mm -hmm. And how were they affected by that? Who was their parent? Mm -hmm. And what are they doing with their life now? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I was really inspired by the first season because almost everybody has made tremendous purpose in their life, has has had a shift in, in how they view life. And Mm -hmm. really the first season ended up being more about life than about grief. Right. And I I have been listening to several episodes from the first season. In fact, I think I've listened to Ben's episode. And if I'm correct, one of the things that you ask him about is what positive quality did he walk away from his grief experience with? And I think he said compassion. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, so when you talked about the story of him sitting with you and sharing his story, you know, I just thought that that's such a wonderful thing that you did is that you gave him this opportunity to put into voice, you know, something that he had gained, Mm -hmm. even though he would never would have wanted to have gone through this experience, but he did come out of it with this particular quality. And so that's season one. What season is your podcast on now? Season three. Mm. So the second season was about healing. So Mm. I reached out to a couple of past guests from season one and asked if they wanted to host a mini series of their own Hmm. because I'm trying to create this community out of breathing wind. So it's not just the focal point isn't just on me, Mm -hmm. but it's on other people and giving them a chance to be on the other end of the mic. And it just so happened that both of the folks I had reached out to and they had said, yes, we're healers. Oh, wow. And then I serendipitously met somebody who is an ICU and palliative care nurse. And I mean, that year I was really interested in hearing and helping 
hearing how she heals with dealing with such a difficult condition of COVID-19. Mm. And she brought in that expertise and lens and really added to that, that work. So it ended up being about healing. And then I also did a mini series on caregiving, which is particularly challenging for me right now. It's the anticipatory grief that you're feeling and the resulting effects of how you've been a caregiver and how you then view life later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that an aspect of your life that you feel comfortable sharing on this episode, the caregiving aspect or because... Yeah. I can. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Well, yeah, I just, I know that some of these topics are sensitive and, you know, yeah, you can say no, if you don't want to (laughs) talk about something. Yeah. Yeah. No, I am a caregiver to my mom who has kind of early Alzheimer's and being a long distance caregiver is a unique situation. kind of makes you feel a little bit on edge a little bit more than normal, maybe. I don't know, because it's difficult no matter what. <laughs> right, right. And the reason why I think is anticipatory grief. And also you're faced with your role reversal nearly every time you see your parent. Mm. And you have to hold on to maybe what your vision is of good care, because at least in my case, I mean, I meet a lot of resistance in the process of caregiving. Mm-hmm. And there was one person who I spoke with uh, last season who she really just encapsulated the experience really well and talked about how she was able to develop a sense of compassion after caring for her mom and they had had a difficult relationship Mm -hmm. and it was just it was kind of an eye-opening moment for me and I rested with it for a while Mm -hmm. (laughs) and when I finally did take a break I decided the best approach for me actually would be to be closer to my mom in part because I was talking with people again similar to season one years after they had gone through a caregiving experience. Mm -hmm. And so they were able to reflect in hindsight and say, you know, this was actually, I needed to do this. I need, this was something that I needed to do. And I feel, I feel like I've contributed in a way that, that has meaning and will give Mm -hmm. back to the world, you know, at large. And I still don't know. (laughs) I don't know if this will make me a more compassionate human, but I'm certainly armed with a lot of ideas of how to how to be my mom's caregiver. Mm. And, and really, I think a lot of that came out of the confidence came out of doing hosting that mini series. Right. So, yeah. So the podcast tends to follow my journey, too. <laughs> yeah. And I love that, though, because I feel like almost everyone of a certain age can find themselves in your journey. I listened to the episode too. Is it the woman? Did she write a book called Without a Fight? Yes. 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 I listened to that. I'm not the caregiver of my dad and he doesn't have an Alzheimer's diagnosis. He is, however, almost 92 and went through a very serious health crisis right at the beginning of covid that because of the isolation of COVID, I think was really something that took a huge toll on him. And my brother is the caregiver. And I listened to that and so much resonated for me, even just the times when I visit and things that my brother and I have talked about. So that was a great one. If anyone is a caregiver of a parent I really recommend that one as well. And I listened to the one about the person who is adopted because I was also adopted. So you have so much in your podcast that I think people on their own grief journey can relate to. Yeah, there is there is a lot there. And I think the guests that have been on the podcast are... I'm so grateful that everybody's been open and expressive and Mm. able to really engage in this topic because I guess, I guess the biggest misconception that I had was that this would be too vulnerable of a topic. 
this would be too scary to go into for people. And it, I mean, it was kind of a fear of mine for before launching right. that, you know, a family member would hear and disagree and there'd be this ensuing fight um, <laughs> to the end. But it wasn't like that at all. It has just right. been full of open and receptive people who have generously provided their stories to this project. Right, right. Well, I think that you have set the example, though. Don't you think you've set the tone by sharing your story? Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that is something I, that's probably happened. And I think probably, in a sense, not having a background in grief or in journalism might have served me in that regard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like your podcast because you just give your guests space to express their story in the way that they want to and that they need to. Yeah, I guess that comes from not having journalism experience. <laughs> no, yeah. not really. I'm just joking. I had a couple of conversations with someone about Oprah's style, and I love Oprah's style. She can interject quite a bit, and and it can seem off-putting to be that person to do that. But she does get get people to really open up. It's just mm -hmm. a different approach. I think you're right. I think there's uh, places for that and places for your style, which is very spacious. And I think if someone's telling the story of their grief, do you really want someone to be interjecting those types of redirecting comments? Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Yeah. But it is good too, because then you ask follow-up questions, which I think helps then guide the narrative of what they're talking about. Yeah. Do you want to say anything about season three? You brought it up and I'd love to know where you're headed now. Yeah. So I, I'm going to be focusing on the miniseries format again. Mm -hmm. We have some wonderful guest hosts who are signed up for it. We're still in the production phase because... I have to take December off. I have to have a month to just be off. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be about joy ah. and how you can find joy. And it may be, there may be a theme of grief still because people may have found joy after grief or during grief. But it's really just a chance to kind of take a deep breath and lean into that feeling. Mm. That's fantastic. It just, as you were saying that, I just thought that you are really helping to narrate a full human experience, which has to include grief. But the beautiful thing about being human is that we can hold all these different experiences in our lives. It's not going to be, I've experienced grief and this is going to define me for the rest of my life. I love that you're going to focus on joy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's the word that keeps coming up for me when, when you say that is equanimity. Mm. And I'll be interested to see how that comes out in the coming weeks and months. That's fantastic. I can't wait to listen to some of these new episodes. Where can people find out? more about your work and particularly about where can they find this podcast? Yeah, the podcast is on breathingwind.com. Mm -hmm. And also I tend to post on Instagram at breathingwindpodcast. Mm -hmm. I've been told that the newsletter is also a really excellent resource mm -hmm. for those of you who like a little bit old fashioned email. <laughs> Which I do. <laughs> I do. I enjoy your newsletter very much, by the way. Oh, thank you. I love writing it. It's just, it, it's always like this, oh, this feels like such a great way to complete the episode. And you can get to the newsletter on the website. Okay. Well, I'm just going to say personally that I'm very sad. You feel like a new friend that I was looking forward to having many long lunches with and that you're going to move back to Iowa. But at the same time, I'm excited for you for what you're going to get out of making that choice. 
So I'm trying to practice equanimity around that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, I'm sure this is going to be a see you again later. (laughs) Yes. 13 plus years in the Bay Area, I can't imagine not coming back. Right. Well, thank you so much for being on this episode, Sarah, and for sharing all of this. I think it's something that more than ever people need to hear about and connect to a community about grief and to share grief. And thank you for giving me the chance to share. You're listening to Art Heals All Wounds. so much to Sarah Davis for being a guest on this episode of Art Heals All Wounds. If you'd like to learn more about Sarah and her podcast, Breathing When, visit www.breathingwhen.com. That's B-R-E-A-T-H-I-N-G-W-I-N-D.com. You can also find Breathing When wherever you listen to podcasts. The additional music in the intro is by musical artist Mon Plaisir. The sound effects are from Stereo Scenic and Tayera Kamori from freesound.org. The music you've heard in this podcast is Yellow Light District and Otto Waschenlage Instrumental by Lobo Loco. Beethoven's Piano Sonata No. 15 in D Major was performed by Karina Galanian. This episode was edited by Eva Herstova. We're at the beginning of our second season of Art Heals All Wounds. I so appreciate your listening to this podcast. Please, if you enjoy it, share it with others. Leave us a five-star rating and even a review if you feel so inspired. We'd also love to send our newsletter to you, which you can find at our website, www arthealsallwoundspodcast.com Thank you.